Hey, welcome everyone into the Wells Tech Garage for this week's episode of Tech Connect. We are on episode number 17 already. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to answer some of those comments and questions that we had during our last broadcast at the beginning of March when we were talking about the wideband oxygen sensor, the air fuel ratio sensor, the UEGO sensor, whatever you want to call it, whatever the manufacturer you like to work on calls it. Remember, they have a bunch of different names, but we tried to cover everything we could related to those sensors and uh, the four wire sensor, the five wire sensor, how they react, how to diagnose them. And we had some awesome comments from you guys. So first comment in was from Mohammed Havid Malik. He said, today I'm lucky to join your class. Today I canceled all the reservations and closed up the workshop to join you. Feel lucky. Well, Mohammed, we do feel lucky. So thank you for uh, closing up, canceling all your appointments, and joining us today all the way from Saudi Arabia. We, uh, we really, really love having you here, so thank you for being here. Our next comment comes from Onboard Tech 333 He says, at this point we were um, hooking up the scan tool to the vehicle, and we were going into vehicle specific to pull up our live data. And he said, why do this in vehicle specific? Use generic, please. And actually, Eric Obrada from South Main Auto also came on and said, I agree with the generic. And they both have a really good point here. Remember during our class that we were covering scan tools and uh, the different modes, mode one can give you generic data if it's available. On our Taurus that we were looking at with our Vera scan tool, I was unable to get into that mode one generic data. It wasn't able to pull it, so we ended up having to go with just the, the live vehicle data, but remember, when you go vehicle specific and you go into live data, it is possible that that data could lie to you and infer values into, into that data that aren't true. So the, the benefit of generic data, again, is to, uh, is to get that uh, truthful, truthful information. All right, then Steve came on. Steve asked, is fuel pressure important of O2 sensor values and operation to look at? Steve. Fuel pressure is critical for O2 sensor values and fuel trims in general because if we don't have enough fuel pressure, then our, our cylinders are going to run lean, our oxygen sensor values are going to show lean, and our engine is going to have to add fuel on our short term and long terms. So we would probably see with a low fuel pressure running engine, probably the lower you know, under 450 millivolts for sure lean on our oxygen sensors, and then our fuel trims would probably show high. Uh, plus or uh, plus 10 or maybe 15, 20, who knows, on these short-term and long-term fuel trims. So yes, fuel pressure is critical. And actually, Steve, that brings us to part of the next class. So I am going to talk about that during our next class. Sandy Anderson came on and said the Varus hates low voltage, and, and that's so true. During our second broadcast that went out at 2 o'clock, we had some issues getting the Varus to connect and uh, communicate with our 2013 Taurus, and uh, we strugg struggled with it a little bit. You know, that's part of part of going out live is you guys uh, you guys can can feel the pain that we had to go through there. Uh, we struggled with it a little bit. Our battery on our Taurus was a little bit low, but what it ended up being that wasn't allowing us to communicate was the. DLC connector on the Taurus actually had a little bit of spread pins on there. So when we would wiggle the connector as, as the uh, Varus hooked up to it, we would be able to get it communicate or not. So long story short, the Taurus needs to get a new DLC connector because the terminals are spread. Alrighty. Mike came on and Mike said, Mike, this class was worth the hour and a half time. That's awesome. That's really good to hear, guys. I was a little bit nervous because I knew when I prepared for this class that it was going to be long. I had a lot of information that we wanted to share with you guys, and I thought it would be better, and tell me if I'm wrong here, but I thought it would be better to be able to get all that information out in one sitting, one video, one live broadcast, versus splitting it up into a bunch of broadcasts that would then be, be harder for you guys to go between each one. This way, Everything on, that we're going to do on wideband sensors is in this one broadcast, just like everything we're going to do on narrowband sensors was in the broadcast beforehand. So if you guys like this, let me know. If you don't like it this way, let me know. If you'd rather just come for a 30-minute class, let me know. Um, we are going to try and not let them become an hour and a half again. 
Um, there's just a lot to talk about. So if you guys like the length, if you like them a little bit longer, great, let me know. If you don't, let me know too. I'm just, uh, I want your feedback. I'm curious. Let me know what you think. All righty. Last comment from James L. Oh, and this, these weren't all the comments that we had. We had a ton of feedback from you guys just saying things like great class, um, really liked it, really appreciated the effort we put in, and, and we love those comments from you guys. Thank you so much. Um, it just, I'm not going to share them in here because it would just be a filler on time, and I know how important your time is, guys. So I want to just address the questions and the, and the things that we can learn from as a, as a group. So James came on, and he had an awesome question. He asked, also, was wondering if using a loop of wire at the air-fuel ratio sensor wire to go down, uh, to go on your low current clamp would give a better resolution so you can actually see the low milliamps. He says he's seen someone do it, but can't seem to find it anymore, and he said that he'll try it next time when he's following, uh, fooling around with his picoscope. Great job. So basically what James wants to do is he wants to measure that milliamp current draw on the wire going between the PCM and the air-fuel ratio sensor. Remember, air-fuel ratio sensors are going to be measured typically in that current draw, and they're very, very small. We're talking tenths of the milliamps. So what he wants to do is install a coil of wire around that single wire, and what that would do is that would amplify the, the, the signal or amplify the milliamps. So then you could put your low-amp current probe on there, and you could probably get some, uh, some reading out of it. Now, I talked with one of our test engineers here in the building, and he had said that we could do this. This would be a good test to do, uh, but it would be time consuming, and he said that it might give you um, a lot of uh, errors or hash or something in the, in the signal. Because you're trying to boost such a small amount of milliamps, we would expect to see a lot of um, interference in that signal. So he said, by the time you were able to do all that, he would rather just hook a scan tool up to the vehicle as well, um, or a scan tool up to whatever he's working on as well to read that milliamps because it's just able to do it more accurately. Um, I really do like the test, and I had thought about showing it during the last class, but everything became so, so stretched out and long that I didn't want to want to take any more of your time. Um, so James, it is a test that can be done. But as a, as a tech in the shop, I just didn't see the value in it. And, and maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe I'm, let me know if I'm wrong here, guys. But I don't see the value of having to go in and do a test like that that's going to take that amount of time when typically at this point you'd just be hooking a scan tool up and monitoring that, uh, that milliamp rating. So it is possible to do, and it might serve its purpose in certain situations. I just want to try and teach you guys the fastest and most efficient way because at the end of the day, Fast and efficient is how, uh, how we make money in the, in the shop, you know? So this might be one of those one in a thousand diagnostics that you need to do it on. And if that's the case, James, let me know. Let me know how it turns out when you, uh, when you do end up fooling around with your PicoScope. And uh, I'd be curious to see some waveforms out of that. So my email address is always up in our broadcast. It's always up. I'll throw it in the description here or just comment in. I'll give you my email address. I'd like to see if somebody out there has done this with that coil of wire with a low current amp clamp on there. So, all righty. Awesome comments, guys. We really, really, really appreciate the feedback from you. It uh, just helps us grow as a, as for, for our training for you guys, and, and it makes it, I would assume, better for you guys then. <laughs> okay, our next class. April 6th, we're finally going to come to the end of our fuel trim segment. Uh, we've been doing this since January. We started with basics of where to start, then we got into auction sensors, wideband sensors, and now we're going to take everything we've learned and we're going to apply it to fixing two different vehicles. So April 6th, 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Central Time, we're going to go live and we're going to be in the shop the entire time. We're going to be diagnosing the GTO and figure out what's actually wrong with that thing. And I'm going to throw some other tests in there that you could perform, um, some tips and tricks and, and some things that I've done. And then we also have a, I believe it's a 2004 Chevy Colorado with the uh, five-cylinder engine that's also setting lean codes. So we're going to go over the diagnostics on that as well. And uh, yeah, I'm going to share with you what I've done. And if you guys want to share with me something that you do when you're looking at richer lean codes, let me know. 
You know, if you have something out there that's maybe a little bit different, maybe something that you don't see everybody else doing, share it with me. If it's, uh, if it's something that I can squeeze in, I will definitely show it in the training because, you know, again, that's how we're all going to grow. We share our ideas together. So let me know if you guys have something that's out of the ordinary that you like to do on, uh, on your uh, fuel trim diagnostics, all right? So April 6th, 11 a.m., 2 p.m. Central Time, we're going to do fuel trims. We're going to conclude our fuel trim segment. And uh, all right, I think that's about it for today, guys. Please like, share, follow, uh, retweet, uh, Facebook, like, you know, all that stuff. Check us out on all our social media. Um, we're always posting out to our social media almost every day now, so definitely check us out out there. And uh, all right, we'll see you guys on April 6th. Have a nice weekend.